Well, what's up, scholars? Today we're going to introduce the concept of centripetal acceleration and centripetal force. So centripetal acceleration is pretty simple. It's the idea that something that's moving in a circle must accelerate. So I'm going to jot down uh, a description of this circle. What, all, what you can see here is we have a circle with constant radius r. An object starts by moving with some constant velocity. We'll call it v1. So again, a description here of an object traveling in a circle with constant speed and constant radius, it's going to accelerate by changing its direction, not its speed. So what we're going to do to show that is we're going to let it go forward just a tiny bit, and we're going to do some analysis of the vectors and things like that. So I've let some time elapse. Our object is moving counterclockwise around the circle from a velocity of v1 to a velocity of v2. Now I've tried my very best to draw the magnitudes the same, and we'll note that in just a moment. What's important is that it's moved in physical space and it's slightly changed directions. We're going to assume that the angle that it's traveled around the circle, remember all the way around would be 360 degrees or 2 pi radians, we're going to assume that the angle is very small. I'm actually quite a bit exaggerating here. The reason we want to do that is so that this actually ends up being very close to a triangle. This delta s that I've drawn in there is the distance, the straight line distance that it's traveled. And you notice if I zoom in close, that the arc length that it's traveled and that distance are very similar. That's really important for actually doing our proof, but overall, the thing you want to get out of this is the formula. So if, you, if you're confused as I go through this proof, it's really okay. Now what I've done is I've taken the triangles that are on my paper, so that would be here with the two radii, and here uh, the arc length or the distance that we've gone, again we're assuming the angle is very small, and it happens that that angle is the same as the angle between these two velocities. So I've pulled that over here, and by adding one more, I'm going to try to draw this nice and straight, by adding one more line, we can call that delta v, or the change in velocity, because all we've done here is change direction. We haven't actually changed the amount of velocity. Um, we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. A couple things I want to note about this. First, this is just a change in position. We started here on the circle and moved to there. Uh, distance is just rate times time, so I'll write that in the language we've been using here. So the, oops, the change in the position, delta s, is equal to, or it's very closely equal to v delta t, keeping in mind here that this is actually moving in a circle. We're assuming a small angle so that this distance is very close to that arc length. Again, if that's confusing, it's really okay for our purposes here. The other thing we want to notate is that the magnitudes are the same. What I mean by that is the length of these vectors is the same. So we're going to do a little bit of a shortcut by saying the magnitude of the first velocity is equal to the magnitude of the second. In other words, the meters per second, the rate that it's actually traveling, is the same. And so I'm going to drop my hat here and just say that the magnitude is equal to v. That's going to make life easier for us. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use similar triangles to move forward. Now the, the thing about similar triangles is it's very useful and we often forget how to use it. Basically it says that if you take the ratio of any two sides of proportional triangles then they will be equal. So for example, if I took this radius, which is the same side of the triangle as V2, over um, delta S, that would be the same as going over delta V. I'll show you what I mean here. So I think, I think I said that backwards, but it's the same thing. So if I take delta V, which is up here, we're going to ignore the vector hats for right now because we're just looking at the magnitudes here. But delta V, that's the short leg at the top, over V1. And so that's going to equal... Delta S, that's the, the short leg on top of the other triangle, over little r. It ends up not mattering, but over little r. Now what we can do is push this forward a little bit. Um, we're going to end up wanting to know what delta V is. I'm going to show you why that is. We're looking for centripetal acceleration, and so we'll just give the definition of acceleration. It's the acceleration is we're going to just take the magnitude and not worry about the direction for right now. Acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Um, again, we're just ignoring signs and everything like that for right now, so that's why I'm leaving off the vector hats. So you can see that it'd be great if we could have delta v out of this, so let's do that. 
um, I'm going to make two modifications. So let's multiply both sides by V1. So delta V is equal to delta S times V1 over R. And then what I'm going to do is pull down what delta S is approximately equal to. Remember, this is just a distance. It's equal to the rate times the time. So we'll just substitute that in here. Um, so that will be delta V is equal to V delta T, V multiplied by delta T times V1. Now remember, we said the V1, we can just say that that's V. These two velocities are the same magnitude, and that's all we're talking about right now. So instead of V1, I'm going to say this is V, and that's all over R. Now if I clean that up just a little bit, this should be V times V times delta T over R. So delta V, I know I'm going quickly, you can see the algebra steps here. So V times V, it's V squared times delta T all over R. Now let's take that information and plug it into the acceleration equation. So A, the uh, magnitude of A, just the acceleration here, is equal to, so on the top it will be V squared times delta T. I'm just substituting in delta V right here. Over R all over delta T. Now if you look carefully, you've got delta T on top and delta T all the way down here on the bottom. Those will end up canceling. So you end up with a very simple equation that describes the acceleration of something moving in a circle. So this is the magnitude of the acceleration. It's just V squared over R. We'll put that in a box in just a second. Um, the last thing we want to know is what direction is that acceleration going to be? I'm going to try to demonstrate that to you right now. So if our object is some radius R away from the center, we can say it's right here, distance R away from the center. And what we want it to do by the time it gets up to here is we want it to be going perpendicular or tangent to the circle. So at this moment, this vector V has a VY component. We call that VY. And it has a VX component. Now, what we need to do by the time it gets up to here is we need to slow it down in the Y direction and we need to speed it up in the X direction. So for example, by the time it gets to here, there can't be any VY left. So let's just call this We'll call that V1 and we'll call that V2. We can't have any Vy left. It needs to be all Vx. So the way to do that would simply be to slow it down in the Y direction. So we'll have a negative Ay or an Ay that's acting in the opposite direction and an Ax that acts um, to speed up the Y velocity. So it'll be something like this. So A x will speed it up the net effect being that a is towards the center so which direction is the acceleration acting the acceleration for an object moving in a circle is always inward so I will put up, just to finish this off, the acceleration of something moving in a circle called the centripetal acceleration. Is AC for centripetal is V squared over R. And it's measured in meters per second squared. That's all we got on this one, folks.